So I see a lot of you out there are really enjoying my in-depth function videos on my FT3D. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to go over one of my favorite features on the FT3D, which is the band scope. So I was a little off by a touchscreen radio when I first started looking at the radio, but the band scope is really what sealed the deal. Having a band scope on a handheld radio is a super cool feature and it's still fun to play with. I myself, I'm, I don't use it as often as I thought I would, but it's still a really handy tool. So we're going to go over some of the, the cool things with the band scope, what you can do with it, how you can use it, the different settings on the radio to adjust it, and by the end of this you're going to know everything there is to know about the features of the band scope on the FT3D. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, uh, please do so. Uh, we upload two videos a week, we live stream every Sunday at 7 o'clock. So if you like my content, please hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and move over and get started. Okay, so before we actually get into the band scope itself, I want to go over the different functions and settings that you can use to tweak the effectiveness of it. So the first thing I want to iterate is that the band scope has three different settings. You can either put it on 19 channels, 39 channels, and 79 channels. That's the whole spectrum, but it has your receive frequency in the center of that. So, for example, if you have it on the lowest mode, which is 19 channels, then we are going to change that. So, for example, if you have it in the 19 channel mode, then on the spectrum you're going to see 9 channels to the left and 9 channels to the right, and then you'll stay on your center frequency. So that makes up to 19. So, the way channels are divided up is actually by your step that you have. So, let's, look, let's take a look at that first. So, hold in your display button to bring up your menus and then you'll go to the config menu and there will be a step option here. Now step is what uh, configures your VFO. Uh, it tells the radio how far you want to leap when you change channels in the VFO. I have mine set to the lowest but you can go from 5 all the way up to 100 kilohertz. So the way this affects the band scope is for each channel, if mine's on 5, then each channel is going to be 5 kilohertz apart. It means I'm going to get a shorter bandwidth. So if you have it set to 100, for example, and you're doing the 19 channel spectrum um, analysis, then you're going to get 9 100 kilohertz jumps from the left and 9 to the right, which is quite a bit more bandwidth than if you would have done 5. But I like 5 because I'm not missing anything, uh, and it's my nice small steps. So I'm going to keep mine at 5, so that uh, is going to be 5 kilohertz apart for each channel. And the next uh, setting you're going to take a look at is going to be under display. So we're going to go to display and band scope. So this is what I was talking about before. So you have your three options. You have 19, 39, and 79. The default is set to 39. So 39 would be roughly 19 channels in each direction. Um, so that's pretty much a good middle ground. Now I do find that there is a little bit of lag once you go up and into 79 and it works much faster when you're at 19. Obviously because it's not having to scan as much channels at a time. But let's take a look at uh, 19 first. So you'll select how many channels you'd like and you'll go back, back, back. And you want to go to VFO. So if you're not there already, make sure you just hit the VM button and it'll take you straight to VFO. Now, once you're there, you're going to hit this function button here on the touch screen, and then you scope. And that's going to show us our band scope. Now, this right here is the lowest setting, so I'm covering the lowest amount of bandwidth. Um, now, you can use your knob here to cycle in through the band scope. So, as you can see, the signals that are a little higher, my radios, it breaks my radio squelch, and I start receiving them. A lot of them are garbage because I'm in an apartment near all kinds of tech equipment, but you pretty much see what's going on here. Now if I wanted to pause this, I can do this just like that, and it's going to show me just one frame of all the signals that were captured. If you want to start it again, you can hit the search button, and it'll start scanning again. Now you can actually switch between the amount of channels from this screen here, but you have to touch the channel. See how I did that? It went from 19 to 20, uh, 39. Now, 
as a, as you see, it's not as smooth as it was before, but we're getting quite a bit more bandwidth. We're getting about 19 channels and to the left and 19 channels to the right, which in my case is in five step, five uh, kilohertz uh, intervals. If I touch it again, we'll go up to 79. So we have a nice little rich waterfall display here. Um, well, it's not really a waterfall, but it is a spectrum analyzer. So. Here, just like before, we can just scroll through and uh, check out what's going on on each of these frequencies. And we can hit the stop deposit and search to start again. Now, another feature of the band scope is you can actually jump around. So if I want to go here to where this peak is, for example, I can just tap on it and my radio will change its receive frequency to that uh, particular frequency. I can do it again. So you can use these to actually jump around the, uh, the spectrum and find different stronger signals. So once you're done using the band scope you can just hit the stop button or you can hit back and it'll actually get out of the band scope entirely for you. And that pretty much sums it up. That's uh, all of the settings that you can tweak with the band scope and pretty much all of, the fun all of its functions. So yeah, I, I hope this helps somebody out. I try to make these videos quick and to the point. Uh, it looks like they received really well. People really appreciate the in-depth guides into the different functions. So I hope this helps somebody out that was a little curious about the Manscope stuff but didn't know all the juicy details. Uh, anyways, if you liked the video, please make sure you subscribe. And join me on my live stream on Sunday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 1900 Eastern Time. Because we have a lot of fun there. I like to uh, talk with my subscribers and talk with my viewers and just interact a little bit and play radio. So anyways, thanks for watching, 73.